Okay, Gallup has just released their latest trial run poll with registered voters. Presidential election, Romney 47, Obama 45. I've got this new app I uh, picked up on the iPhone over the weekend. It's a poll tracker. Every poll in the world, I get a notification alert. And this Gallup poll, is it's, it's been consistent for uh, two or three days. And folks... I don't, you know me, I, I don't rely on polling at all. I think polling is used to shape opinion rather than reflect it. I think polling is used to make news. And particularly, as you get closer to the election, they become more relevant. A poll in March or April is worthless because the election's not in March or April. It's too much yet to happen. But you can... If you want to study them, you can detect trends. And in swing states, Romney and Ryan are gaining ground. And in some places, it's, it's, it's small, but it's perceptible. I, I just get there's something happening uh, out there. And I frankly have been of the opinion that and I've been very careful saying this, but you've heard me say it. If the election were held today, I think we're looking at landslide. I thought that a week ago. I don't think this is, I don't want to say this too often because uh, political situations are too volatile, as the Aiken thing illustrates. But they, they're not looking, Obama isn't looking happy. Nobody on the Democrat side is looking happy. These people are at war with each other, and they're getting, even if it's possible, more maniacal in their TV appearances. And they're saying some of the craziest, wackiest things. And uh, the Aiken thing's unfortunate, but I'm going to tell you, I, th I think the Democrats are... I don't want to say this too loud either, because I don't want to affect what their inclinations are, but I think they're set to implode over this. I, You know, they, they have these hot-button boilerplate issues that cause them to go to page two of their playbook that's 30 years old and they put plans into motion uh, that just are not relevant i you know they, they live in a bubble they lie to themselves about their own popularity they they fall for it because the media creates a false impression of just how many people do support democrats and liberals in this country i just have a uh, sneaking and yeah, this yeah, like like for example, it, it, nobody showing up at Obama appearances. So they say, "Oh, well, we're doing that on purpose." All right, right. We are limiting the audience size so the president can have a more intimate uh, event uh, with the attendees, and we're also limiting the amount of money at any one time. That's such a crock. There isn't the enthusiasm for Obama that there was. Nowhere near it. Anyway, I, let's go back to the phones. Jim in uh, Poplar Bluffs, Missouri. Great to have you on the program, sir. Mega diddles, Russ. Thanks for taking my call. It's Poplar Bluff. Yeah, you bet. Right in the boot hill. Hey, I drive a truck, Russ. Yesterday I was listening to radio, and by 5 o'clock I was all for getting Athens off, and I was about ready to tear the radio out. I was sick of listening to everybody. But I got to thinking, I was stationed in the service up there at Fort Leonard Wood, and our company motto was deeds, not words. And if I look at the deeds that that Akins has done, he's been conservative 100% straight down the road, and that's why I voted for him. And and I think, what I like I said yesterday, I was aggravated, and I just wanted to uh, just throw him under the bus also. And I got to thinking about that. I thought, no, the man... Well, what, were you, uh, what, were you, what were you aggravated about? Well, I was aggravated because of the words he said, and no one was supporting him. You had Romney, you had, you had Ashcroft, you had Chip Bond, all of them ready to throw this guy under the bus. Uh, just for a few words you said, and I guarantee you, all the words they have said and the things they have said, we've stood behind them. And Missouri is concerned. We're the show-me state. And and through through Atkins' deeds, he has showed me he is conservative. And it's time for a conservative to stand in front of that firing squad instead of circling the firing squad. Well, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. You know, he said a stupid thing. I, he I, say a stupid thing. I, I, I talk, yeah, I, I got a lot of I got a lot of calls from people like you yesterday uh, on this who who think that there's a whole lot of disloyalty uh, going on out there. And I'm gonna tell you, Jim, it's simply 
because this is cru- we have to win the Senate. All the rest of this is academic. We have to have 51 senators if we're going to repeal Obamacare. And we have to have people that are going to do it. We've got a tremendous challenge ahead of us. Winning the White House, taking the Senate, getting rid of Harry Reid and Chuck U. Schumer and the rest of the Senate leadership. Uh, and what what Aiken did did not further that. It remains to be seen if uh, it's if it's going to hurt. Well, uh, w- but but it just it, it was just unfortunate uh, that the the whole thing happened, and uh, then the aftermath when he attempted to turn this around and make it look like uh, he was a martyr and standing up for... This wasn't about abortion. It wasn't about pro-choice or pro-life. It wasn't about any of that. It, it, it's, it's about shooting ourselves in the foot unnecessarily. We can't make any unforced errors. We just can't afford them. And that's why there was the uh, the outcry. This is not something that you would suggest somebody do or say.